Welcome to the Music Mission. My name is Panayoti Karmas. I am a music teacher in Sydney, Australia, as well as the conductor and director of the Modest Orchestra, an orchestra consisting of passionate professional musicians that prioritizes the education and enjoyment of music through the performance of staple works and new compositions. All recordings you hear, including this background music, come from our public performances, which you can find on YouTube if you search up Modest Orchestra. This podcast is designed for all lovers of music, no matter your musical preference, experience, or expertise. Now on to today's episode. Well, I think I should start this podcast by acknowledging the fact that I never would imagine to find myself sitting in my music room next to my piano, in front of my laptop, in front of this lovely Rode NT-USB mic- condenser microphone, recording my very first podcast. Never would have thought of that. And uploading it to this website called Anchor, which will supposedly, if this goes well, um, distribute it to every single podcast service there is out there, including Apple Podcasts and I think there's one for Amazon and Spotify even now. I don't know. I'm just glad that this software does it for me. Um, I'm going to quickly say that I really do enjoy listening to podcasts, um, especially about a, two years now, two years ago, when I started driving to work. Uh it would take me about an hour in the morning, an hour and a half in the afternoon. So I was spending a lot of time on the road. And, you know, as fun as it is to listen to an entire Bruckness symphony on the way home or Mahler or Beethoven or Mozart or how, what have you. Um, there came a point after a few terms where I thought to myself, mm, surely there's something better I can do rather than just listening to music all the time. So I thought, OK, well, what's this podcast business? And so I've been listening to a lot of podcasts and I think... Now, it probably swings 60% of my listening in the car is podcasts and 40% is music. And so I found a lot of podcasts, lots of things. Um, my favorite one is Sticky Notes, which is uh, by Joshua Wallerstein, who's the conductor of the Lausanne, Switzerland um, Chamber Orchestra. He's wonderful. He um, breaks down music in a really accessible way that anyone can access And for people who are in the music industry, like myself, can really, really fully understand and appreciate. So that podcast is called Sticky Notes, and I highly recommend you listen to it. But in the meantime, we're going to talk about my podcast, which is called Panny's Musical Mission. So why have I decided to call it Panny's Musical Mission? Well, um, as a teacher, I suppose one of my main missions is to teach students about music and give them an understanding an appreciation of all music, no matter what genre it is. So as a, as a, as a student myself, the first thing I said to my teacher, Leanne Sullivan, who is the, um, one of the trumpeters or the leading trumpeter of the Brandenburg, um, orchestra here in Sydney, we were having a chat one day and she said to me a few, uh, a few months ago, we had, we had a chat and she said, I remember when you were in year seven and the, I asked you, what music do you like? And my response apparently to that was, I like all music. And she was quite taken aback by that because no one who went to the Cod High um, had really ever said that to her. They said, oh, I like classical music. I like Baroque music. I like pop music. But he was this small Greek boy in year seven who said, I like all music legitimately. And I can confidently say that to this day, I legitimately still love all music no matter what it is. And that's basically one of my missions in life, I suppose, is to help my students have that same love of music for the sake of music and not, and get rid of this elitism of like, oh, I only listen to this type of music because it's really highly um, intellectual or I only listen to this kind of music because it's a mad beat. Just music for the sake of music is kind of where I come from. So that's this podcast. And I guess the aim will be for me not to do this solo, um, but to interview various people around Sydney and just have a discussion with them. So the first one we're going to do next week will will be with Amber Johnson, who is also um, a classroom teacher here in Sydney and a choral director. So we're very similar in um, our skill sets as well as our beliefs, and we're very good friends. I guess the main difference between us is that I've, I specialize with instrumental, and she 
specialize with choral music. And so that'll be a fun podcast to do next week. The aim will be to have each podcast every Saturday and Sunday. So I think now is a good opportunity for people to know who I am. So I was born in Athens in Greece on the 8th of February 1996, which makes me 23 years old. And yes, that means next Saturday I'm 24, which is really, really exciting. And I'm going to have a birthday party with my friends, which will be nice. Uh, we'll go out. Uh, I came to Australia when I was nine months old. So I was, you know, a baby. I grew up here. And a fun fact um, that not many people know, but I guess now the whole world will know because I'm putting this on the podcast, was that I struggled to differentiate between Greek and English. And as a result, I almost created my own hybrid language. So in order to fix this, the speech therapist said to my parents, you have to speak one language. And because you're in Australia, guess what? You're speaking English. Um, it didn't really affect me later on in life because I can speak Greek now. So there's no issue with that. And yeah, I went to a normal public school. I went to Clempton Park Public School, which has a very high Greek demographic. I think the school's 80% Greek. And I remember my first day in kindergarten. I went to the school, a like kindergarten orientation day, if that's an actual thing. And I remember seeing the school band just, um, just in the center court playing some music. And I remember the first thing that went to my mind was, oh my gosh, this is the coolest thing ever. They have a band? Oh my, I, I need to join the band as soon as I can. So I took keyboard lessons in year two. And then in year three... I went to join the band because that was the year that you started playing in the band. And for some reason, I think about 60 people in my year decided to also join the band. And our teacher, Mr. Jarek at the time, said, there are too many people joining the band. So what we're going to do, we're going to start a recorder program. And that recorder program must have been really bad because only three people went came out of that and continued with band. And it, um, the three of us all ended up picking trumpet. Uh, the funny way that I picked trumpet was that they gave us a form and the form said, pick your own instrument. And at us at a one section of the thing said own instrument. And I interpreted that as you might, what instrument do you want to own? So I wrote clarinet simply for the fact that clarinet was used in Greek music and my parents would approve of this. And yes, I had actually forged the signature in year three because I knew my parents would not approve of me taking home an instrument. I then rocked up to the instrument trials and Mr. Jack said, it says here you have your own clarinet. I said, no, I want to play clarinet. He looked at me, realized, ah, this kid does, doesn't realize. Anyway, so let me try three instruments. So I tried the clarinet and then I said, oh, can I try the saxophone? That looks cool. And then by sheer chance, I was about to say flute. I said, trumpet. I played the clarinet thinking, oh, it's the same as recorder. Couldn't make a sound. Saxophone. I could make a sound, but the trumpet, there was just something about it, which made it really, 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 really fun. And so I said, just as I was about to say clarinet as my choice, because my parents, you know, they would, they would approve of that. I said the very last second trumpet. And then what do you know? A few years later go by year six, halfway through year six, I got my very first trumpet tutor, um, called Jonathan Sheehan, um, who I'm still friends with to this day. He's a great man. And I did my second grade uh, Amy B exam down in Wollongong, thinking that this was my audition to go into Newtown Performing Arts because halfway through year six, that's when you start thinking, oh, what high school am I going to go to? And so I did my Amy B down in Wollongong thinking, this is for Newtown Performing Arts. Turns out it wasn't. And so I got an A plus for that. Uh, that was also the day that the school went down to the opera house for an excursion. And I remember missing out going, oh, I'm never going to go to the opera house ever again. And well, funny, I thought that because who would have, who would have, how would have I known that I would be going to a music school shortly after. So I went to Morris Brothers Penshurst for two terms, discovered about the con high halfway through term one. And then I auditioned for that at the end of term one. Um, I must have done really well because then I got a letter home from the principal saying, would you like to start up in term three? And I said, yes. And then I stayed at the Con High for six years. I'm specializing on trumpet. Um, and in year 11, we have these things called the house concerts. And these house concerts are basically 
the equivalent of your sports carnivals, your swimming carnivals, in which all the houses compete. We have three houses called Bach, Beethoven, and Brahms. Uh, and we always joke that if there was a fourth house, it'd be Bartok. So in year 11, the, the year 11s in term four um, are the, the most senior students of the school. And that was the first time I had experience conducting in front of an ensemble. Carolyn Watson was the in, um, conducting residence at the Con High, and she had been giving out conducting group lessons, and I had took that up. And I just took a, I just loved it straight away. And so much so that I just really, really begged my peer saying, can I please, 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 please take a rehearsal for the choir for the house concerts? I know I'm not conducting in the actual concert night, but I just really, really want to take a rehearsal because I just, I just, I just want to feel what it's like. And I got hooked. Um, then I went to uni to do music education and funny story. Um, as you so everyone has to do orchestral studies and or performance credits of some sort and so I auditioned for the orchestra and uh the excerpt was Benjamin Britten's guide to a young person's guide to the to the orchestra and the trumpet excerpt which was uh was was one of the set was one of the set works and for some reason I allowed myself to get convinced by another trumpeter in my year saying that oh no it's actually at this speed ta ta ka ta ta ka ta so I played it Obviously, that was less than half the speed, so I didn't get into orchestra. So I thought to myself, oh, golly, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. What do I do? I don't want to join choir because I did six years of that in high school. I've had enough of it. Oh, wait, I can do conducting. How, how, how did I miss this? And so it was just a tiny little flyer in the hallway that just caught my eye as I was like mulling over this thinking, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? I totally stuffed up my audition. So... I auditioned for the conducting, got in, and after that, I just kept pursuing conducting. So at the end of the first year, uh, I formed, so this is now, I guess, the story of Modest Orchestra and how we formed, uh, previously known as Modest Orchestra. Um, so in first year, in 2015, we, I put on a concert, I got together an orchestra, and by orchestra, I mean like inverted quotations or orchestra, of... 17 people, 17 friends, and we played Greek music, orally transcribed by myself and Benjamin Safir, uh, arranged always by me. Ben would often, I, th I think Ben, Ben actually, yeah, no, Ben arranged a whole piece by himself, and I said to him, can you, can you please get this line? I can't hear it. And so that went off really well. And in 2016, a year later, um, in November, I said, hey, why don't we do pictures at an exhibition? And everyone thought I was crazy. Saying, Penny, you can't get an orchestra together to do pictures at exhibition. And I guess stub I was just too stubborn. Um, they say ignorance is bliss. And in this situation, it was. Because everyone was saying, you can't get an orchestra together. And somehow or other, um, I did. I spent many hours, many hours in the cafe, just socializing with people, many hours a day messaging people, working really hard around the clock, spent many hours every day analyzing scores, listening to as many different recordings as possible, analyzing people's conducting. And then on the 26th of November, 20, uh, 2016, we performed pictures and exhibition along as, uh, as well as two other works, um, Jovanilia by Benjamin Safir, as well as The Space by Kirsten Milenko. And that was actually the birth, really, of Modest Orchestra. Um, to explain the name of Modest Orchestra, it reads as modest, and everyone calls it modest within the orchestra because we actually always called it modest. But people started to think, oh, is it because you're a bunch of modest players and you're small? I was like, no, that's not the point. The point is our first concert that we did was Pictures and Exhibition by Modest Mussorgsky. So there lies in the pun. So now we pronounce it modest, but it's still spelt modest. So now we have a pun in our name. 2017, we did a wind band in July for the first time. And then we did Scheherazade as well as many other pieces at the end of that. The year later, we did Dvorak halfway through. And then we did uh, 1812, Sorcerer's Apprentice, um, Beethoven Piano Concerto, and, um, The Emperor, number five. And 
2019, which was last year, we did uh, we did a performance of Clara Schumann's Piano Concerto for Clara Schumann 200th Anniversary. And we also did an, our very first education concert uh, at Kambala, which was very, very exciting. And this year, we're hoping to do the same thing and open it to as many schools as possible um, to do this education concert called Symphonic Education Encounters. Uh, I call it the Encounter Series. A lot of people just call it SEE or C and make that open to the public. We've got a few programs planned throughout the year. We're going to do a concert in July. We're still coming up with a name, but so far a couple of names that are coming to mind are A Journey of Heroes because we're doing Lord of the Rings, Beethoven, Egmont, Overture. We're also doing a new work by Stuart Rin called Schoolyard. Uh, it's a very, it's, it's, it's kind of a hero's tale. And then we've got um, a concert in December that's coming up where we're going to play uh, the Nutcracker Suite, the full thing, because it turns out no one really in Sydney has ever really done the whole thing. We, everyone's just, just done excerpts here and there or done it in, in, in auditions. So that's a bit of an overview. And oh my goodness gracious me, this chair is really squeaky. So I know that for the next episode, I'm definitely not going to use this chair again. So I'm sorry if it's squeaky and if it's really annoying, but there's not much I can do this episode. So that's a bit of an overview of Modest, the orchestra, and how I um, built that up. Um, we now have about 200 people in our database. We've made a musician database, which is both amazing and also a bit creepy. Um, basically, it contains information, just just very basic information, their name and their instrument, which is pretty, pretty, pretty simple. But, you know, when, when you're in the heat of the moment thinking, oh, no, golly me, I need a violinist. We can now go and pick violin and, oops, don't bump the microphone, Penny. You can just pick violin. We'll give you a list of all our violin players. And we use Notion, the app that all the creators on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and everything have been raving on about. And I can rave on about it as well, saying that Notion is great. I'm very fortunate with my music experience in that I've kind of experienced as much as possible uh, for a 23-year-old who's going on 24 next week. I've played in about... 10 different musicals in different different places with different budgets from your you know your classic school production which has an infinite amount of budget and you know great sounding and lighting to your very um, low budget um, community uh, based uh, theater production company that's really far out west or really far out north or really far out south um, just really far out of Sydney CBD in general um, so experiencing that um, I've learned Oh, I guess the mo the most important thing that ever happened in university was that I became uh, I didn't bec I wasn't a single instrumentalist. I stopped playing just trumpet. So I started playing. I started picking up piano. So I got up to grade five piano. I started playing bouzouki more, which is that Greek crazy instrument that you hear in Zorba the Greek. I started to play guitar properly, um, so I can now play bar chords, um, bass guitar. What else do I play? Automatone, which is the best instrument ever invented. I play euphonium play trombone uh i learned piccolo trumpet which is kind of useful uh i'm now learning tuba i have to do a performance of that in a few weeks oops i bumped the microphone again this is really bad placement so i have to play tuba in a few weeks uh i've got a violin and i've been teaching myself very slowly i can play twinkle twinkle and that's about it and i guess i can make my way around a drum kit and do a simple swing beat and a rock beat and that's about it so oh I should talk about this uh, one project that comes to mind in terms of just my musical um, experience in Odysseus Live. So this was a very, 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 very fun project that uh, we've done twice. First time was when I was in second year. I want to say first, but I feel like it was in second year. Um, it was second year um, in which this awesome, amazing slam poet called Luca Lesson decided to do a retelling of of Odysseus so those are the tales within so of like the of like the Cyclops and the sirens and the bow and it's very you know all this Homer's Odysseus all those stories all those Greek stories they're great and uh he's been redone in a pop fusion of orcus of like western music fused with hip-hop with spoken English but also spoken ancient Greek and spoken modern Greek. So it was just this really cool experience 
of many different things coming together for an amazing, amazing, powerful performance. And me being a lover of all music was just overwhelmed going, oh my goodness gracious me, this is this is the coolest thing I've ever done. And wow, I'm lucky to be playing trumpet in this. And then fast forward a few years later, in 2018, we took the Modesto Orchestra down to Melbourne and we did uh, an industry showing of that. So the first time they did it, James Humberstone was p- conducting. And then the second time, it was me conducting. And I was conducting off an iPad using a Bluetooth pedal, my, iP- my Apple Pencil. I was learning. It was a very um, fun experience and re- that really pushed me. Um, just working insane hours, having to work under non-ideal conditions, having to take all the problems that come your way and just like, all right, we need a, so- we need a solution for this. Um, learning how to take technical um, issues, you know, on the chin and go, right, well, we can't do this. This is the solution. Learning how to like set up your own manual metronome playlist that syncs with hip hop beats. And you have to just follow that while wearing headphones. So it was a very multi-experiential experience with lights flashing everywhere and just like, you know, smoke blocking the vision of the orchestra of me. So I thought, hmm, how are we going to get through this? But uh, one of the best experiences, and I'm hoping that that, um, the, the third performance of that happens soon. Um, always keeping an eye on that. So if you want to, you can Google Odysseus Live on YouTube. Uh, not YouTube. I mean, you'll find on YouTube an SBS recording, um, an SBS interview about it. So I've been rambling on now for about 22 minutes. And um, I think that's about the time that this very first podcast, all about me and nothing about else other than just me, should really go on for. Because if it's any longer, then I guess it's a bit self-indulgent. So... I'm going to cut it off here. I think I've said everything I wanted to say. Let me check my fancy notes. A bit about me, what I do, what I've done. Yeah. What did, how did I get involved in music? Yeah. Why did I name it this? Uh, I didn't say that. My philosophy of music. Ah, and I think I'll save that for next week or the week after. In the meantime, I'm going to upload this and probably going to get like five views, but that's okay. And we'll see how it goes. So... I'm not sure how to end this other than in any other awkward way other than, just, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to re- pre-record a um, an ending. But before I do that, it just came to mind now. I'm going to talk about all the different things we're going to talk about. So in this podcast, hopefully we're going to talk about music tech, music recording, uh, orchestral music, what it is to be an orchestral musician. So interview uh, like a percussionist saying, hey, this this whole episode is about how to be a percussionist. And this whole episode is about how to be a brass player. And this episode is about how to be, how to be a conductor and how to build an orchestra or how to build a chamber group and how to book venues and how to liaise and how to get sponsorship, which is something I'm still working on. Um, And how to network and how to create a name for yourself in the music industry. So that's the plans for this um, podcast. There we go. That's a good way to end it. And so next episode, we're going to bring in Amber Johnson and we're going to probably talk about something about music education or choral, maybe choral music even. And yeah, I'll leave it there. I like to end things a little bit awkwardly with, but just, just by saying yes. So yes. And, um, thank you.